So celiac disease is the only accepted in the Western medical world form of gluten intolerance, all right? Or celiac sprue is another name. And it is probably one of the most common food sensitivities that there is in the U.S. and Europe. Um, I would say probably one out of 80 people in the U.S. has celiac disease, all right? But that doesn't mean that it's necessarily that they're diagnosed, all right? The problem with celiac is, is that if this is the population, this part right here, which is maybe about 2%, is diagnosed with celiac disease, actually diagnosed by the medical doctor. Okay, they get a diagnosis, which is helpful. Because if you don't have a diagnosis, but you're just suffering for years and years and years, or even decades, and nobody can tell you what's wrong, how can you fix the problem, right? But then we have this massive part right here that, I mean, most of the population falls into, and, but they're not being diagnosed. So they're just suffering from different conditions. Now, let's look at real quick what a diagnosis has to pertain so that a, a doctor, your Western medical doctor, can, can say that you um, have celiac disease. Well, so first of all, number one, you have to have gastrointestinal symptoms. Okay, so you got to have some diarrhea, maybe alternating with constipation, maybe some blood and stool, whatever it is. You, you definitely are not feeling well in the GI system, okay? So you, got, you just got some GI symptoms. I'm just doing shorthand here, but I'm, I'm hoping it makes sense to you all. Second of all, you have to have a certain genotype expression. And the, the, the genes are HLA, DQ2, and HLA-DQ8, all right? So you have to have an expression of the genes that you can actually have to have, that you can have celiac disease. And three, biopsy. exactly. You need a biopsy of your villi, and your villi, which are these little hair in your small intestine that increase your absorption, right? So they increase the, the surface area of your intestine so that you can absorb your food. The villi have to be atrophied, actually decreased in size, and there has to be inflammation, and there has to be basically breakdown of the tissue. Now, if Mary, we're just gonna say name, is suffering heavily from GI symptoms, and she has inflammation of the villi, but she doesn't have an expression of the gene, she's just not a celiac. The majority of people that are suffering with some kind of gluten intolerance are suffering for decades without ever having a diagnosis.